This is the Hashtag Higher Ed Podcast, presented by eCity Interactive. eCity creates websites, marketing campaigns, and magic for higher ed institutions, large and small. Every digital challenge has a solution. eCity's talented team of problem solvers will help you find yours. And now, here's your host, Stephen App. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Hashtag Higher Ed Podcast. I am your host, Stephen App. Uh, you know, we've covered a couple previous episodes of this show, and we've talked about how schools are competing with more schools for fewer students. And I think that's led a lot of schools to change the way that they address applicant yield. And I'm really excited for today's episode because we're going to be talking about applicant yield and a, and a new approach. Uh, Butler University made headlines this spring as one of the first schools that I've seen to create personalized content, not just for their accepted students, but for the dogs and cats and pets of those accepted students. To know more about this innovative approach to yield, I'm really excited to welcome Christy LaFree, Butler University's Associate Director of Enrollment Marketing, and Michael Kaltenmark, Butler's Director of External Relations to the show. Uh, Christy and Michael, thank you so much for joining the Hashtag Higher Ed Podcast. Yeah, thanks for having us. We're our, excited. Yeah, our pleasure. I mean, for the portion of our audience who doesn't already know about this uh, marketing endeavor that you that you launched this spring, you know, can you give me a quick rundown of the campaign sure. that you launched? Sure. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of a one of those things that took us a while to get off the ground, but it was an idea that had popped up um, in the fall of 2016. Um, uh, hey, wouldn't it be fun if, because we do so much around our mascot, who's a live bulldog already, wouldn't it be fun if we also had a pet communication flow? Um, and we, we kind of took that idea and it was at a perfect time. Um, here at Butler, we use the admission CRM uh, technology Slate. And around the same time that this idea was planted, Slate rolled out some upgrades to how you can collect relationship information in the system. So instead of just collecting um, you know, mom or dad or parent information, we could basically start collecting anything we wanted. And obviously, you know, some of the more obvious uses of that are things like cousins or aunts or siblings. Um, but we immediately said, hey, let's start collecting cat and dog information, um, which, you know, I think a lot of people thought I was crazy at first when I was pushing for it. But um, we did just that. We, uh, in our yield campaign, we have a microsite that's kind of the cornerstone um, of our yield marketing campaign. And this year, we um, added a form, basically an optional form, and we asked a lot of different fun questions, but really the only question that we asked that we you know, legitimately cared about was, hey, do you have a dog or cat? If so, what are their names? Um, and we started collecting that information, and we, we sat on it for a few weeks, hoping that students would forget that they gave it to us, and they did. Um, and meanwhile, you know, on the back end of things, we were working with Holistic Select um, to have them donate some small bags of cat and dog treats and we put together print pieces for cat and dogs and we waited a few weeks and then we did a big mailing to the cats and dogs of the admitted students um, from trip butler blue three our mascot and it had the treat in there it had the note from trip telling the cat or dog hey i'm going to look after your human while he or she is here at butler um, and it essentially was like a little mini celebration package, care package for the pets of our admitted students. Um, so we mailed them out, we kind of sat back and waited to see what would happen and social media basically just blew up and we had students and parents submitting photos or tweeting photos to us um, of their pets, you know, with this little care package and on the front of the print piece it says, my human is Butler bound. Um, and so yeah, it was kind of just one of those, this sounds weird, but maybe we should try it anyway ideas. and. We did, and it and it worked. And I'm so curious. You, you mentioned people thought that you were a little crazy when you yeah. first, you know, started yeah. talking about this. I mean, what what was it about your audience that made you feel like this was going to be a hit? I mean, was it just this gut feeling of of knowing your audience? You know, I think it was a few things. Uh, you know, here at Butler, we've we've done a lot of work on our enrollment marketing strategies over the last few years, um, and. Cool. We have a really, I think, innovative approach where our admission and our marketing teams, um, you know, we work really closely together. I'm kind of that bridge between the two departments, and we're all in the same building. Um, so I think, you know, with those two teams working together, we've been able to try a lot of different things, um, and, and they've worked. And I, Michael has a saying that he always says, which I think is so accurate, um, you know, in, in the crowded space right now in, 
in the college selection process, what are some things that Butler could do that no one else can do? And we found that those things tend to um, tend to involve our, our mascot trip. And we've been, do you want to talk a little bit about the trip visits and all yeah, that good stuff? Yeah, it's true. I do always say that um, because I think um, – the market is pretty saturated and schools really struggle to find ways to differentiate themselves and it just so happens that we have one of the most prolific and prominent live mascots in the college landscape uh, the, the, these days and so why not take advantage of that and I don't think it cheapens our message in, in any way and in fact I think it almost bolsters it I think it, I know it does and so uh, given the way that we've been able to do it and so I, I've often said we should utilize the dog if that gets us more eyeballs or ears than uh the kudos to us and so um it was really our predecessor our boss our former boss matt mendrum who's now vp of marketing for the indianapolis motor speedway um who heard that message from me and said yeah you're right we should and challenged me to take it a step further and so we would take the dog on the road quite a bit uh around the men's basketball schedule being in the big east uh, gets us into some some markets outside of uh, Indianapolis in the Midwest, namely Washington D.C., Philadelphia, New York, uh, and so we would. In addition to playing basketball in those markets, we would take the dog and create a, a bit of a PR and marketing buzz. And it was our boss, former boss, who said, uh, "While you're there, why not um, go see prospective students and maybe even deliver their uh, admin packet or something like that." And, I, I wasn't one to shy away from cool new new identity idea, and I said, "Yeah, let's do it." And so, we had to convince our our friends over in admission that it was a good idea, uh, and they kind of went along with it. I think maybe reluctantly at first, and then they were humoring us. Yeah, yeah they might have been humoring <laughs> us with, to give us a list of names of people in these markets uh, to go see. But I did all the legwork. I set up all the visits, worked with the parents to to surprise their son or daughter who was a prospective student or admitted student um, and go show up at their doorstep and say, hey, uh, congratulations, you got into Butler, and by the way, here's our dog, or um, or something to that effect. And it seemed to work. And so the, the results came back that these people were much more likely to end up matriculating in the fall. And so the next year they said, hey, can you do more visits? And then the year after that, yeah. they said, can you do more? And now it's just sort of a thing, something that we do. And so- Something that we're really known for. I mean, mm -hmm. we'll have students who come to visit campus and. I think at least once a day we have a student ask, hey, how do I get one of those personal <laughs> trip surprise packets that I'm seeing on social media? Um, so it's really just become kind of a cornerstone of who we are and what we do. Yeah. And so this campaign where we're communicating directly with prospective students' pets, it's just sort of a evolution of yeah. us going and seeing the actual prospective students with our dog. We, you know, we, As Christy mentioned, we get so many requests now. Again, we, we do this sort of at random and... and um, and sort of on our own whims to go see these students, depending on where we travel. Uh, again, we get so much requests and so many demands. It's like, well, how can we, our president has said, well, we just need to get more mascots and I <laughs> tell them that's not feasible. So <laughs> rather, rather than, <laughs> rather than adopt more dogs, uh, what if we just started communicating to other people's dogs? I mean, clearly we have a demographic of people that are pet people, dog and cat people. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a dog, and so I think there's an open door there to communicate uh, in a way that maybe others can't. Yeah, Michael, I'm curious, and Christy, too, you mentioned just the <clears throat> excitement based on visiting these students with the dog. Mm -hmm. I mean, given, given that excitement that you had uh, with the previous kind of iteration of this campaign, I mean, how... How surprised were you by the response to this campaign? I mean, you mentioned that a lot of people were interested in, yeah, in getting yeah. these care packages. So, you know, I think throughout the entire campaign, um, I tried to be very intentional about how we were collecting the information, where were we collecting the information, and I didn't want to, you know, ruin our own surprise. I didn't want to just send out a one-question form, require everyone to fill it out, um, and kind of hint to what we were going to do with it later. I think that part of the charm of this campaign is the fact that we collected the information subtly, we sat on the information, we didn't do anything with it, and then we did something with it later. Um, so a lot of thought went into to just that. How do we collect it? Where do we collect it? So um, we landed on 
embedding it on a form on the microsite, but it was below the fold. So I think when we launched the microsite campaign, I was a little bit worried that kids may not see it, um, or if they did see it, they may be more interested in clicking through to go to the various microsite pages than they are um, to give us their cat and dog information. But um, it became pretty apparent after we launched the microsite that kids were more than happy to give us their cat and dog information. Um, I wish that they were as excited to give us, you know, things <laughs> like search form responses and, um, you know, missing application components as they were to give us their, their pet names. Um, but we, you know, I think we had over a thousand um, pet names in the system in a day, I want to say. Um, and I think our staff was pretty surprised too, because all of a sudden they'd be jumping in student records and they'd see, you know, like mom, Sarah, dad, Paul, cat fluffy you know all right next to each other so um we were pleasantly surprised with with the volume of response that we got uh before anything about the care packages even hit social media yeah and i'm curious how did you then send out the packages was this all done within your own staff um yeah so that, that's a funny story so we do uh we do a lot of direct mail here um but we tend to outsource most of it just you know obviously from a from a time and budget standpoint um, but with this campaign, you know, silly me, I thought, oh, you know, these will probably be onesies and twosies every few days. Why don't we have our tour guides handle fulfillment? Um, we have a group of about 60 Butler students who work part time in our office. Um, and, you know, I was, again, surprised by the volume. So instead of doing onesies and twosies, we had our tour guides um, really, you know, kind of set up a little mini factory to get these things together and out the door. And um, I think we, we learned the hard way that we'll probably need to outsource this next year, too. <laughs> But that's a good problem to have. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and you, you mentioned the microsite, Christy, and I'm yeah. curious, just from a logistical standpoint, can you take me through some of the steps that made this campaign possible from the moment that you did pitch it to the moment that you were able to launch it? Yeah. Um, so really, the pet communication flow is just kind of one piece of our overall yield marketing strategy. And so before we could launch that, we kind of had to have the whole strategy in place and figured out and... Um, so I work really closely with um, our two IT guys, uh, Nathan Scorey and Jesse Knoll, and the three of us um, kind of handle the systems and marketing side of what we do um, in the enrollment world. So, uh, you know, building the microsite, we basically built it from scratch. Um, thank goodness Nathan's really good at coding because I am not. And we were able to talk about the different pieces that we wanted to have on that microsite for students to engage with. Um, and we knew in the back of our heads that we also wanted to do this pet idea kind of on top of the microsite. So we just had to think through where do we collect the information and, and how to embed that form. Um, but, you know, on top of on top of just building the site itself, we had um, a pretty robust email campaign uh, set up in our CRM to support it. And then we had various print efforts that also pointed there. Um, and then kind of on top of that, you know, as it is at every school, we have just some general enrollment type messages during yield season that always need to go out, you know, things like FAFSA reminders and financial aid information and event invitations um, and all that good stuff. So yield's kind of crazy around here and it's both my favorite and my least favorite time of the year um, just because there's so many different pieces going out at one time that it gets a little bit tough to juggle all of that. So really it was just, you know, coming up with a strategy and, and making sure that we didn't forget about this idea and that we presented it at the, at the best time. While the communication planning was happening on the front end, Michael was on the back end, helping us think through, um, you know, what this piece would look like and, and what we would essentially deliver to these pets. Yeah, I think, as I mentioned earlier, there's a we had an open door, given that we had a dog and we're communicating with people that have pets. And so there's some commonality there. And I think we could easily communicate with these folks, whether it's um, digital communication or print or both. Um, and do so in a fun, pet-centric way, and I think the message would re be received, but I, I just can't help myself. I love the attention to detail. I love to sort of put on a little frosting, if you will. Um, and so, given that we have a live mascot program that's fairly established, we have some key sponsors and partners, and one of those is Holistic Select, which happens to be a food brand that's made in Northern Indiana, and uh, the parent company is Well Pet, um, which is on the East Coast, and um, I reached out to them and said, "Hey, we're 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 getting ready to do this top secret um, pet communication flow with our prospective students. We'd love to have you guys be a part of it. 
um, here's what we're thinking, and would you be willing to throw in um, a little sample of product in there as well? And and as a you know, to show our appreciation for your help, we'll I'll obviously give you a product mention and endorsement. And um, but I don't think it'll come off to the recipient as being uh, just marketing fluff or being, you know, a, a, some spam. Product placement, yeah, product yeah. placement. So the way we pitched or the way we, we positioned it was, you know, the dog, Butler Blue the third trip, he's addressing the, the prospective student's dog or cat specifically and says how he's so excited that their human's been admitted to Butler and how he's going to be the dog that takes care of them the next four years so they don't need to worry, yada, yada. And oh, by the way, as a token of my appreciation, uh, just being the stand-up dog that I am, here's a little sample of Holistic Select, either you know dog food or cat food. Um, I eat this stuff. If it's good enough for me, then by all means, it's good enough for you. So have at it. And and I think it I think it was well received. Um, it certainly was a nice addition to the mailing. Again, I don't think it had to be in there, but it just it I think it really set us apart um, and showed. Uh, how how serious we were about yeah. this not so serious mailing, yeah. and um, and and it really was the icing on the cake. Like it really uh, was was well done. Yeah, and it added to that element of surprise. And if there's one thing that we love doing here more than anything else, it's figuring out ways to surprise our audience. And I think you know everybody loves getting gifts in the mail, um, especially unexpected gifts. And I think this was a good example of that. Yeah, that, I mean, I think they were thrilled to get a gift for their pet. Yeah, yeah. Part of the surprise, I think, is actually getting regular mail or snail yeah. mail, if yeah. you were. If you were, Do you think that played a role? And, and how important was it that you actually sent them a tangible item through the mail as part of this? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. And early on, when we kind of had this idea, but we weren't sure how we wanted to execute it, we were asking ourselves that question. Um, and we were throwing around the idea of doing email, you know, either instead or to support it. And, and I think a few things that we landed on, um, A, we thought direct mail was definitely the way to go. Um, You know, having that piece of mail in your hand addressed to your pet from a different pet, we purposely kind of cut the human element out of it. Um, And, you know, in some ways it's it's similar to when, you know, your dog or cat gets a postcard from their vet, you know, and it having something mailed straight to the pet we thought was, would be more attention grabbing than having an email that was sort of sent to the pet, but you know, was sent to the pet via the student's email address. Um, We also were careful because we thought this was an idea that could get corny pretty quickly. Um, You know, it's cute perhaps the first time you do it, perhaps the first couple times you do it, but we we worried that if we added too many emails or additional messages on top of the mail piece that um, it, it could just kind of appear cheesier than we intended. So, not to say that we'll always keep it that way, um, but this year, you know, first year out of the gate, we decided just to stick with the one more prominent male piece. And I, I mean, I tend to err on the side of corny. He does, uh, yeah. I got to rein him back in. So <laughs> uh, it's right up my alley. But I think uh, what works in this is the is the previous work we've done with the dog, and so people have sort of come to expect this from Butler yeah. that the dog has a voice and that it, it it's. Um, that voice transcends just the dog and it, it includes the university as well. And so, and then the university's brand is strong enough to support it. Mm-hmm. And so it all comes across pretty genuine at the end of the day, yeah. uh, which is good. Um, otherwise, yeah, it probably would be pretty corny. Yeah. And really in our mail flow, it fit in so nicely. So our student admit packets go out, we include a poster in there, like a lot of schools, a lot of schools do that um, we encourage students to take a picture of themselves holding. It says, I am Butler Bound. Um, so the student admit packet has that look to it. We also send a parent admit packet a few weeks later, um, and that has a very similar look to the student admit packet, but it says my student is Butler bound. Um, so for the pets, it was kind of just, you know, an extension of that, of that look. And their piece said my human is Butler bound. So when you line those three pieces up next to each other, it was just kind of a natural progression and almost like a tongue in cheek sort of thing. Like, Hey, everyone in your house got one. We're going to send you one too. Let's pivot a little bit and talk about the response to the campaign. Chris, you mentioned earlier how you, know, you had almost a thousand or yeah. over a thousand submissions on this form within just a day or two. 
I mean, can you share a little bit on the other end? So what were some of the early responses to actually receiving these packets? So they freaked out, uh, <laughs> which meant that we freaked out. Um, so I think one of the most interesting and one of the most telling things is while our current student, who are the tour guides, while they were packaging the packages and getting them ready to go out in the mail, they were freaking out. And they were saying, oh my gosh, I wish that I had had one of these sent to me when I got into Butler. Um, a few of them actually jumped on Twitter and were tweeting pictures of it. And I, you know, being the crazy person that I am, tried to shut it down. Like, no, we don't want to spoil our own surprise. Um, but I think when I saw their reaction, um, that was pretty telling that it was going to be successful. So we mailed the packages out um, and pretty quickly we saw students immediately tweeting photos of their dog or cat. Um, they were very excited, very, I think, surprised. And we saw a lot of captions like, oh my gosh, this university just sent this to my dog or um, I can't believe my cat just got mail. Uh, but another thing that was a little bit unexpected is that we saw a lot of parents mm -hmm. um, lose their minds. And you would see, you know, mom or dad jump on Twitter for the first time in a yep. year uh, just to tweet at Trip or just to tweet at Butler um, with a photo of their pet and, yep. the, and the mailer. So that was fun. Yeah, probably to the great embarrassment of their yeah. student, oh, yeah. their prospective student. But uh, we, we still, it humored us, so we were grateful for the response. But yeah, a lot of parents jumped on. And then, uh, like Christy mentioned, prospective students themselves uh, sent in pictures and responses and then... Like us, there are some people that have their pets on social media, and so yeah. we got some of those responses yeah. as well yeah. directly from the pet. So yeah. it was cute. We saw a lot of response, too, just from other schools, peer institutions, um, especially schools that use Slate, just reaching out and saying, like, oh, my gosh, how, do, like, how did you guys do this? This is a crazy use of this new relationship feature. Um, so that was fun, too. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say that this campaign met your expectations. But one of the things that I'm interested in is, and with higher education, right, it's such a major emotional decision of where to attend college. And I'm curious about how you measured the success of this campaign. I mean, it's not as easy as saying the student came because they received this package. But I imagine you have something in place to, to determine how successful overall beyond the anecdotal feedback. It's tough because what the responses you get from a campaign like this don't necessarily correlate to uh, hard enrollment numbers, right? And uh, so it, that's a tough sell to, to, to have our superiors approve um, <laughs> expenses for these type of mailings. Yet, you know, we persist that they do um, because I think there, there is some, at least some hard data in terms of you know, number of eyeballs and social media stats and things like that, that this, this will generate. And you can't question that. That's all favorable and stuff that results that wouldn't have happened had we not done this. But then there's, there, you still have to go back to, I think, to that anecdotal piece mm -hmm. and, and give it some value. And um, again, it's not easy to quantify, but what we've had working in our favor the last few years are, are these dog visits, and those do produce some um, some decent results and some some quality data. And so, what we've learned is um, that the dog, the, these personal touches with our live mascot, with the dog, um, can go a long way. And they, um, I'm not I'm not suggesting that a dog. Um, is the reason that people decide to attend Butler University. But however, I do believe that the dog can get someone to give Butler University a closer look. Mm -hmm. And and that's everything, especially in this market. And so, um, so I think from that notion alone, it's worth investing in campaigns and initiatives like this, because if we get a couple more kids to take another look and those leads, those lead uh, to a couple more students coming to Butler in the fall, then it was worth every penny. And what we found through the dog visits and now this campaign is that's exactly what happens. I mean, I had a mom uh, last year reach out to me and said, hey, um, just wanted to touch base, send you an email and say thank you again for coming to our house and surprising our son with a personal visit from the dog. Um, when you came to visit, Butler was um, on his list but was probably last of about five or six schools. And I'm pleased to let you know that because you came, he took another look at Butler and he's going to be there in the fall. And that, 
I mean, that's it right there. That's why we do, that's why we do this. That's why we leverage the dog. That's why we put them out there. Uh, that's why we do uh, some sort of corny campaigns like this is because he's an attention grabber. And if he grabs someone's attention just one more time, and that's one more student we get, then great. And plus, I think it just reinforces um, who we are, our brand, what we're trying to do here. I mean, I, I get responses on social media all the time because I don't tell anybody, but I tweet for the dog. And um, we get responses on there from current students and prospective students that may, maybe the dog did something funny, he posted something funny on Snapchat, or he had a funny response on Twitter, or he posted some, some funny content on Twitter, and then they'll, they'll either repost it or retweet it or what have you, and they'll say, this is why I went to Butler. And we know that's not true. Uh, the dog is not why they went to Butler. But there's a, there's a lot of emotion and sentiment wrapped up in there, and that dog is representing a, a whole host of feelings and personality that speak to the core of Butler and what we're all about. And so these campaigns, uh, enrollment campaigns, where we utilize the dog pretty heavily, uh, go hand in hand with that. And I think they resonate with people. They get down uh, at a level that you know that we're that we can't get to otherwise. They get to that subconscious. Um, and something ticks for people, especially pet people, um, because they get it. They're dog people, they're cat people. And so it doesn't seem corny to them that a dog is talking to their dog. They, they love it. Yeah. And so we're able to speak to something at their core, which resonates with something at Butler's core, and it works. And like you said, it's choosing a college is a highly emotional decision anyway. And, you know, lo and behold, um, we do these things and we get students out of it. So. And I think, you know, something else that – we've been trying to get even better about uh, at over the last few years. Um, on the marketing side of things, on the enrollment marketing side of things, we're always really interested in the long game, I think. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, admission, rightfully so, is often more interested in what can you guys do to help us with our class this year? Um, what can you do to get us yep. 10 more deposits next week? And, and not to say one's more important than the other, but um, I think a lot, of, a lot of these type of PR and kind of grassroots initiatives that we do, like taking the dog out on the road, visiting students, that may not necessarily translate to an immediate, um, you know, spike in enrollment, but we've seen and we've heard that the word of mouth that, that we get from doing things like this um, spreads rapidly and gets us leads that we may never have even gotten in the first place. And like Michael said, it, it just, it brings more people um, to our website, brings more people to our visits, um, and it's really just a door opener for us. Yep. And um, I think an, another area where we're really seeing the success of these campaigns is actually in our application numbers. Uh, in two years, we've increased applications by 50%. So um, to me, that's kind of the biggest indicator of, of the fact that what we're doing at, at each part of the funnel is really paying off. Yeah, I imagine within these personal networks, and you talked about the students that are going crazy or parents going mm -hmm. crazy and they're all sharing on social media, you know, students obviously aren't only friends with people their own age. Right. I imagine right. you're almost getting a halo effect with, with yeah. friends that are a year younger, yeah. two years younger, and now we're like, oh, that's really cool. I'm going to yep. apply to Butler. Yeah, we too. absolutely are. And we're seeing that halo effect pay off in our search efforts too. Um, we've had a, a few really strong years of search campaigns. And I I mean, I don't have hard data to, to prove that it's because of this dog initiative, but I, I think it's pretty safe to say that, you know, there's a reason all of our trends started going upwards there's a reason that that correlated with when we started being more intentional about how we were using trip. So can you, t I mean, can you tell me what the future holds for this campaign? I, I mean, I'm not sure how you top sending these treats out yeah. uh, to pets, yeah. but, but where do you see, I imagine this will be somewhat of an ongoing marketing campaign for you. I think it probably will be. Um, you know, I'm not sure that we want to spill any secrets and we've still got some months here before yield season kicks off again, but you know, after seeing the success of last year, um, Michael and I are both pretty competitive individuals, so I know that we want to kind of one-up ourselves and, and do even better in this upcoming cycle. Um, so I think we'll, we'll kick some ideas around with the team and, and see what makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about this is uh, the shtick doesn't really wear off. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a, a new, new batch group, of, yeah. Yeah, it's a new batch of students each year, so we'll continue to take the dog on the road and go visit prospective students. That's a no-brainer. Like we mentioned, the data from that sort of speaks for itself. And, and, and you're right, Stephen, there is a halo effect even within those visits um, by students who are just paying attention on social media. And, and even though they didn't get a visit, they still think it's really cool that mm -hmm. a prospective student did. And so uh, it still resonates with them. And so we'll continue to do that. I think we, we've struck on something here with 
the dog, our dog communicating with other dogs and cats of prospective students. And so I think that'll probably continue. Uh, whether it's the same campaign as last year, I don't know yet. We haven't determined, but it very well could be. And I think that'd be just fine. Or we, may, knowing us, we'll figure out a way to tweak it uh, and make it different. But um, suffice to say, um, we'll probably keep doing this sort of stuff because we the results speak for themselves. It seems to work. It's sort of what we're known for. Um, and if it isn't broke, you know, why fix it? A pretty good indicator for Michael and I is when we pitch an idea, if a lot of our coworkers think we're crazy, we normally know that we're like on the right path. Mm -hmm. and, and this was definitely a case where I don't know how many times I had to tell people like, hear me out. Let me, let me tell you the whole idea here. Um, and I think half the staff thought we were both nuts, but, but it worked. But so. they also know that we've been doing this long enough yeah. to sort of give us a long leash, pun yeah. intended, yeah. and let nice. us go, uh, <laughs> and do what we do. And, uh, you know, I don't think we've let them down yet. So we're just going to keep coming up with corny I would like to see ideas. us expand the cat communication a little bit. You would. Yeah. You're a cat person. Yeah. So. <laughs>Well, Michael and Christy, I mean, thank you so much for, for joining the show and, and kind of cluing everybody else into this really, I think, innovative uh, marketing yield piece here. But before we let you go, of course, there's a couple housekeeping matters that we'd like to take care of. I mean, first of all, tell our listeners where they can find you online. Sure. Well, um, I'm a terrible follow because I'm usually <laughs> working on behalf of my dog. But if you need to follow me or you want to, I'm at M.S. Kaltenmark. That's M. S K A L T E N M A R K, and that's Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat. Um, but the bulk of my social media activity comes from my dog, um, and you can follow him at Butler Blue Three. So uh, all one word: Butler Blue and the number three. And he's on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. So that's where uh, you can find me. He's a busy dog. He is, he is busy. yeah. Um, I'm fairly active on Twitter, um, kind of in the higher ed marketing space, so you can follow me there. Uh, it's at Christy Lafree, K-R-I-S-T-I-L-A-F-R-E. And, of course, each week we ask our guests to give a social shout-out to one or two colleagues or individuals that just, you know, deserve more recognition of their work. Uh, and I believe, Michael and Christy, you came prepared with a couple people in mind. Yeah, yeah. Um... I'm happy to give a shout out to a couple guys who have inspired me. Um, one being Tim Segelski at Marquette University. He's the guy behind um, social media at Marquette and uh, the Father Marquette at Father Marquette persona. And uh, he's he's been a great resource for us. He's introduced us to Sprout Social, which we use to manage our uh, social media at Butler and. Um, he, he wrote the book on social media, literally. You can Google it. It's called Analytics to Action. It's a good read. Uh, so he knows what he's talking about. This guy, um, he's always up to something. So in addition to all that, he, he writes a weekly newsletter, which you can sign up for. And he, um, he teaches a class at Marquette. Um, he's a very accomplished uh, distance runner. Like, this guy's fast. But I think he uses it as an excuse just to drink beer. Uh, he calls himself the beer runner. And so he... he uh, blogs and writes about that. Uh, really cool guy, um, Tim Segelski. And then also uh, Todd Sanders at the University of Florida. Um, hilarious guy. I first, I first met Todd when he was doing social media at University of Wisconsin Green Bay. And now he's down at the University of Florida running their social media operation. Um, I love his philosophy. He's, his family, when he first got hired at University of Florida, his family was still in Wisconsin. And uh, he told me, that he was just trying to get fired in his first year at Florida. Uh, he was pushing the envelope so hard. And uh, that's because he's not afraid to fail, and he believes in what he's doing. And, and fortunately for, for Florida, those folks went along with him, and they're doing great things, and he keeps uh, getting their administration and other folks involved. And uh, it's really fun to watch him work and uh, to get others involved at a huge place like Florida. So uh, those are two guys uh, I'd like to shout out to, and I think Christy has a couple as well. Yeah, so um – you know, it's not necessarily an individual person, but I would recommend following the Technolutions Twitter account. Um, you know, they're they're one of the fastest growing CRMs out there, and I think they do a really great job on their Twitter of connecting institutions and um, you know bringing people together around ideas and around concepts. Um, and so I just there's always something interesting on there. 
Um, and I will also recommend following kind of the voice behind that Twitter account, um, Alex Williams. He um, manages the Technolutions Twitter. And on his personal account, he's always great about sharing interesting articles, um, you know, sharing information about trends that are out there in the digital and higher ed world. Um, and he always responds to my cheesy cat tweets. So people around here kind of refer him um, as my Twitter BFF. So definitely worth a follow. Yeah, a huge fan of Alex Williams yeah. uh, and the entire Technolutions uh, team. I mean, they're, they're one of the fastest growing CRMs for a reason. Throw a good party, too. So. Well, Christy and Michael, again, I just want to thank you so much for joining the Hashtag Higher Ed podcast. I mean, I really enjoyed this conversation, um, and I know everybody else will, too. So until next spring, when we chat again about the, <laughs> the second iteration of, of this campaign, uh, thank you so much for joining the show. Yeah, thank you. you it's our pleasure.